Good afternoon, this is uh, Schweitzer, and we're going to do a fairly involved problem here on um, energy and dragging something. So I will tell you when I feel you could stop. Let's just kind of talk about the problem a little bit. You can stop it any way you want, but I'll give an indication before I start working on the, on the answer to the problem. But it says we have a steel block with a mass of 10 kilograms pulled along by a copper coated floor. There's our the uh, coefficient of friction of movement uh, is 0.36 for a distance of 20 meters. The blocks uh, the force exerted on the cable is 80 newtons. So we're pulling this block um, the cable uh, at 80 newtons, and this thing has a force going down. Um, of well 10 kilograms times the force of gravity which is 9.8 so 98 newtons is the weight of this guy and then we have um, a couple problems what is the block acceleration um, what is the block speed at the 20 meter mark if the block is released at the 20 meter mark how far does it travel before it comes to, to rest and D, what's the power output of the cable? All right, so let's solve a few of these problems. So if you want to pause your video right now and kind of try it on your own first. Um, okay, so the force of exerted on the cable. Um, force, now, if you want to look at this problem, we've always, we're always we going to include friction everywhere here. So. I have a for, my force of gravity here is here, 98 newtons, and I have my force normal here. So my force normal equals my force of gravity, which is 98 newtons. My force of friction equals, uh, in this case, the force normal um, times the coefficient of the moving item and this is going to be 98 newtons uh, 98 newtons times 0.36 so the force of friction equals about a third of 98 we're talking 30, about 35 newtons of, for, of friction 35 newtons um, equals your force of friction. Okay, and now to solve for A, um, A is asking for the net acceleration. Now I call it net acceleration because I'm going to use the net force in order to solve for it equals the mass times the acceleration net. So I have, for example, I have on this block I have force of friction which is uh, 35 so by subtracting these two guys gives me a net force force net uh, equaling 80 minus 35 equals 45 equals 45 newtons um, in the direction to the right all right so this is just going to be 45 newtons equals the mass which is 10 kilograms solving for the acceleration net and the acceleration equals 4.5 newtons alright um, I should say well, acceleration is not a newton sorry that meters per second squared box it we're done okay um, let's see B uh, what is the blocks speed at the 20 meter mark. So at this point we could continue with some of our kinematic um, mathematics but this video is more dealing with um, energy. So let's solve B here so for my eraser to go off. Um, energy in equals energy out and the energy in okay before um, we have a sort of a force being applied uh, on this object for a certain amount of distance. This is classic mathematics for work. 
clockwork is just a form of energy in joules. So all the energy in is just simply what this person puts on it, 80 newtons, and is going to be applied for grand total of 20 meters. 80 times 20, we get 1,600 newtons of energy are being expended. Now, all this energy can go towards either moving something, um, could be done overcoming friction, and when you overcome friction, you, you produce thermal heat. So, some kinetic energy will be produced, and some thermal energy based off of friction. So, quick little point of uh, here. Keep in mind, kinetic energy is equal to one half mass velocity squared. And the thermal energy, I'm going to put that right here. What do we get for TE? It's not on your laminated sheet for the AP Physics 1, but uh, in this case, we have the thermal energy. Um, is equal to what? Well, and any force times a distance. So in this case, we're taking the force of friction times some distance. And then we are going to take, okay, well, the force of friction is the force normal times the coefficient of friction times distance. And the force normal, if we're flat, the force normal equals the force of gravity which equals mass times gravity so at our place here at school uh, that we work we generally consider most of our problems flat and you might see this as a formula mass times gravity times co friction, coefficient of friction times the distance equals the work done by friction and that is a pretty important formula so mass times gravity times coefficient of friction times distance. All right, so at this point, again, it becomes more algebraic. Um, 1,600 would uh, be one half. The mass of this item was provided at um, 10 kilograms. So we'll go 10 kilograms times the velocity squared. Um, in this case, um, so we're trying to figure out what's the speed of the block at the 20 meter mark. Okay, so that's what I want to find. V squared plus 10 kilograms times gravity, 9.8, times the coefficient of friction, which is 0.3. I'm running out of room here. I'm just going to erase this and start a little bit lower here. Um, so plus 10 kilograms times 9.8 times 0.3 times distance of 20 ah, that's 20 meters they don't want 20 meters they want it at um, yeah I guess they're saying 20 meter mark okay yep what's the block speed at the 20 meter mark okay so let's do that put 20 in there this thing is all the energy lost by friction Note, this number can't be bigger than 1,600. If it is, then there's something wrong. Um, various issues could cause that, but at this point, let's see what we've got. 10 times 9.8 times 0.3 times 20 equals 588. Now, if by chance this is number ends up being bigger than this number, what that means, assuming we didn't make a typo, is that the cost of friction is more than what you have actually provided and you would not have enough energy to actually drag this item that far and this would be the minimum amount of energy needed to drag it and at that point um, would have a zero velocity I guess um, so either way subtract this off and the rest of the energy is free to cause movement So we have 10, 12 equals 1 half, 10 kilograms V squared. So that's obviously 5. Divide by 5, square root the answer, and we get 
the velocity equals 14.2 meters per second. We've now solved problem number B, or letter B. Okay, if the block is released at the 20 meter mark, how far does it travel before it comes to rest? Okay, that's another problem. Let's try this out here. Give us a little more room. All right, so this block is taken, okay, and our first problem letter B is take this thing and you are basically dragging it 20 meters. Now we're going to take this block and we're just going to let it slide. And it has a certain amount of energy as it proceeds, but all the energy is being evaporated transferred into thermal energy. So all the kinetic energy it started with will equal um, the, kinet the thermal energy. So the question is how much thermal energy will it take to completely erode all of the kinetic energy? So one half mass velocity squared equals mass times gravity times coefficient of friction times distance so this is essentially is uh, our force of friction and the question is how much distance is required uh, to equal the amount of energy that I have in the movement. At this point I can cancel mass. This is one half velocity squared which is 240 squared equals 9.8 times 0.3 at was something 0.38 maybe. Uh, look at the exact value here. Alright, 0.36 is what we got here. Um, it says it in the actual problem. There you go. 0.36, and then at this point, we want to solve for this distance. Alright, so 240 squared times 0.5 equals 28,800. And I want to divide out this value. So divided by 9.8 divided by 0.36 equals and I get 8163 equals um, distance okay does that answer make sense um, the question was uh, how far will it slide alright seems like a bit of a distance seems a bit long um, we're traveling at a speed uh, 240 uh, meters per second and did I grab the wrong velocity I was doing a problem earlier that had a rocket launching at 240 meters per second that's a pretty s steep speed so let's see what we did here ah yes I grabbed the wrong speed get my problems next up okay so if it was traveling 240 meters per second, it would go a long ways let's just sub in our correct value um, so we got one half 14 point uh, what was it uh, Two and equal square that value equals 9.8 times 0.36 times distance. Ever you do a problem, does it make sense? That's important. 14.2 ta um, square this thing equals 201 times 0.5 equals 100.8 equals and then divide by 9.8. Divide by 0.36 equals, um, in this case, um, 28.5 meters equals the distance. And at this point, we're quite a bit happier with this problem. Alright, and then the last problem states, okay, what is the power output of the cable at the, at the 20 meter mark? Okay, so a few things you might want to note here. Um, let's put this problem right here. Power is equal to energy per time. Energy is joules. Time is in seconds. Uh, well, one joule per one second is one watt. All right. All right, so energy. We know that this thing here... Um, total energy is going to be um, including everything we put into this thing 
is just the work that this thing did. Um, and we have that right here, 1600 newtons. That is just the force times the distance. Now, now something went towards heat, that's fine, we still used it. In this case, it's going to be 1600 newtons divided by the time. Uh, that new that should be a joule. Alright, make sure I didn't grab the wrong number here. Um, it would be, yep, just mismarked here. That would be a joule. Alright, and then it took how long? It said it took uh, up top there a grand total of. Alright, should give a time here. Steel block, pull along, quarter floor, 20 meters. The force exerted on the cable is 80 newtons. What is the block's acceleration? Okay, it's not giving us a time here. We need time for this guy. So, what we can do to get time, and sometimes they'll just give you the time. Okay, this problem is a little bit trickier. They want us to use our kinematic equations to get the time. So, at this point, we have a couple of formulas we could use. Let's walk through these. Distance equals xi plus vit plus one-half at squared. We have v at times t equals vi plus at. And at this point, we also have, um, if you sub this formula in, um, we have the distance equals xi plus vit um, plus one half and it was um, uh, vf minus vi times t. So in this case how do we want to solve for time? Um, we know we're traveling a distance of 20 meters so we have this 20 meters we know this is zero, we know this velocity we don't know how long this takes to get to 20 meters. Um, so let's solve for the time. Once I have my time, um, well, that's what I want. I want time. So the distance is 20. Yeah. We don't have the acceleration. So the velocity initial is zero. Uh, the velocity final, we don't know. Um, or was it the velocity final we didn't know? Uh, yes, here we go. It's saying the first problem asked us, um, what is the block acceleration? Ah, so we have acceleration. We calculate that array. 4.5. All right. That's going to help out. All right, so a few ways we might be able to do this, but let's use the distance formula here. We're going to go 20 meters equals xi, which is 0, plus the velocity initial is going to be 0 because it starts at rest, we pull it, plus one half, 4.5, and then t squared. All right, this problem's got a bunch of good stuff in it. 4.5 times 0.5 equals 2.25. All right, and then t squared, divide out, 20 divided by that is 8.8. .8. Equals t squared, square root, the answer, and I get 2.9 seconds. Okay, take that value, plug it back into here, and we get our power 1600 joules divided by 2.9 seconds is. 551 watts. The large W stands for watts. Fairly in-depth problem. Good one. Covers pretty much, gosh, just about everything you'd probably want on this section. Thank you.